The University of Tennessee Medical Center is our region's only academic medical center. Our mission is to serve through healing, education, and discovery. Our goal is to share the knowledge of our physicians and staff in these health education videos as you make healthcare decisions for yourself and your family. Lung cancer is the leading cause of cancer-related death in the United States. It accounts for approximately 155,000 deaths each year. Now, anyone can get lung cancer, but those people that are older than age 50 or have a he history of heavy smoking are certainly at higher risk. Other, other occupational exposures, such as asbestos exposure, can also raise your risk for lung cancer, but this is much more minor compared to the risk that you have if you smoke heavily. Non-smokers are also at risk for getting lung cancer. Obviously, this is to a much less degree than smokers, but almost 10% of all lung cancers are diagnosed in non-smokers. This accounts for approximately 22,000 diagnoses of lung cancer each year in non-smokers. The reason why non-smokers get lung cancer is not entirely understood, but certainly genetics play a large role in this. Unfortunately, patients do not develop symptoms of lung cancer until the cancer has progressed. Oftentimes, this is very similar to other types of cancer as well. Now, some of the symptoms that patients may have could include fevers, chills, night sweats, some weight loss, or decreased appetite. Some patients even cough up a small amount of blood. Any of these symptoms need to be evaluated by your physician. Lung cancer is diagnosed when we look at a tissue specimen or a piece of the, the tumor under a microscope by a pathologist. Now, oftentimes patients will have, a, have had a CT scan which shows an abnormality in their lungs. This is oftentimes when they first come see a pulmonologist to evaluate this. At this time, uh, we need to figure out how we need to go about figuring out what this abnormality is. Now, there are many options available to patients these days. One option would be to proceed with something called a bronchoscopy, which essentially is a camera on the end of a flexible tube that goes into the lungs to find the abnormality. Another way would be to have a radiologist perform what we call a CT-guided biopsy, where we obtain a biopsy from the abnormality. And lastly, we could refer you to a surgeon to have the surgeon actually remove the abnormality. Now, in my experience, as a pulmonologist, we oftentimes perform a bronchoscopy. Now, there are many new advances in this, air, in this field right now that we didn't have many years ago, and this allows us for a really a less invasive means of obtaining a diagnosis. We hope you'll join us soon for another medical moment. Visit utmedicalcenter.org or call the Healthcare Coordination Office at 865-305-6970 to learn about services available at the University of Tennessee Medical Center.